all sorts of things to women on their blogs. You hear you people that um, all of you, all of you women that that blog. I know that you get this. That they they want to put you down with what they're saying, and they want to make fun of you, and they hide it because you don't know who they are. They can send you an email, and you have no idea who they are. You don't know where they're coming from. They may send you this nasty email and then that night stand up there and preach a sermon. You don't know who they are. They know who you are. We are standing out there. We are putting ourselves right out there. We're saying this is who we are. This is what we're standing for. And they hide behind an email address. They hide behind the cover of a lot of things and you don't know who they are or what they're saying. And they can say some of the most vicious things to women who are seeking equality. I have gotten many, many emails. I've gotten threats and I've gotten things like this. You put your family in danger, you put yourself in danger when you go against some people against this. got into trouble I sort of walked into this situation I had no idea what complementarianism was um, as a term I was told that I was complementarian when I saw, started um, researching information and trying to get down to the roots of some problematic theology uh, and uh, ended up finding this term complementarianism and uh, I I'm very conservative I believe that since a uh, the Bible does not, it speaks in silence about women being pastors, it doesn't specifically mention them. So I tend to be a little conservative and I'm taking flack from my fellow speakers here for that. A few years ago in 2007 I was asked to give a talk about patriarchy and I was invited to a Southern Baptist seminary um, through a an, an apologetics organization, a countercult apologetics organization, to talk about patriarchy. And I had no idea that I was going to walk into a minefield and a firefight regarding complementarianism. And I heard that I stated some of the uh, foundational doctrines, and I had um, notable people within the Southern Baptist Convention get pretty angry with me. So um, <laughs> that's it. I know firsthand what some of this stuff is. Um, suppressing criticism. Well, I know all too much about that myself. I was told uh, I had no right to say anything about certain esteemed professors at uh, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary and some of their teachings because I don't. I'm not sure why. I just had no right to say anything. Um, I was called, I was contacted by uh, someone in the media and they said, well, what gives you the right to evaluate their teachings? And I said, well, I have been to seminary, I, I do have a master's degree, I'm not ordained, but, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm a blood-bought child of the Lamb, I'm a Berean, and out of the mouths of babes and sucklings has the Lord ordained strength and perfected praise. We're called to speak the Word of God. Who am I? I'm a Berean. I'm a student of the Word of God. So, <laughs> okay, on the first one I've listed is sacred science. This means that the group's doctrine is perceived as the ultimate truth. Therefore, the leaders who hold this doctrine cannot be questioned. They are the sources of the ultimate truth. 
and you are not allowed to question anything. It's forbidden. You will have this reinforced through the unwritten rules of the group. You'll find yourself ostracized. You'll suddenly get in trouble. Um, positive reinforcement for those who don't com those who keep their mouths shut and don't question, and punishment for those who do. Fear mongering is also a part of this. If you venture outside this safe little zone, you know terrible things are going to happen to you. Jocelyn talks about this in her book. Uh, there's some, you know, that if you if you don't submit properly to your husband, you'll be like Michael, and you'll who was David's wife in the Bible, and you'll be barren, and all your children will be killed if you ever have any. Uh, so there, a lot of fear is used to keep people isolated. There's a lot of black and white thinking in terms of psychology. This is called psychological splitting. People are all good or all evil. So anybody in the leadership of the group is, is just, you know, they walk with God and they're perfect. Ideal models within the group who do exactly what the group says are just venerated. Of course, the opposite happens. Anybody that has any criticism to say gets... Uh, labeled and they get demoralized, devalued, and sometimes demonized. I've been called a lesbian because, you know, I guess, well, that's really interesting. It's offensive. It appeals to that sense of consistency, but it also does something interesting. It enhances the milieu control of the group because a good group member doesn't want to hear what some terrible lesbian has to say and they're not going to listen. So. Oh, oh, um, well, oh, well, actually it was the behavior, um, my behavior was that I went to a seminary and spoke. I actually didn't teach any Bible. I talked about this type of information about how groups distort some doctrine. Uh, it was just, I was just actually quoting, reporting some historical information, but I, it's the truth. So I did so with boldness as I'm doing here, I hope. And um, I was told that that was unwomanly, that I was not submitted to my husband. Um, I had people call me and ask me, did my husband go? We didn't see him on the video. God bless him, he went to the back of the room because he said he wanted it to be my moment and he didn't want to distract me because he knew God wanted to speak what he wanted to speak there, and he didn't want to be a distraction. So you can't see him anywhere on the video. And uh, I was told that, that all they could say was that I was a lesbian. But it is, it is very galvanizing because, you know, you don't want to go and hear about the Bible or hear about the church from somebody sinful. So it actually has a very dual effect there. And anybody who doesn't, and we already mentioned, anybody who doesn't comply, they're ostracized and punished. Uh, dispensing of existence, we're on the last one. This is really horrible. Anybody who is outside the group loses their personhood. The group determines who has the right to exist and who does not. If you are not a complementarian, we are told by Russell Moore, that we are all open theists, that we're all just kind of, God's really up there in the sky crossing his fingers, hoping everything's going to come out okay. I don't believe that. I never believe that. God guides me with the righteousness of his right hand. Um, I rejoice for the step, my steps are ordered of the Lord. Um, I don't believe that in any way, shape, or form, because I don't believe that... Uh, in the eternal subordinationism of the Son doctrine, that Jesus has less authority than God the Father, and that Jesus doesn't have the authority to hear prayer. I don't believe that. Does that make me an open theist? I don't think so. But that appeals to people's sense of consistency. If I say something in, in dissent, I'm going to get labeled, and I'm going to get called names, and they're going to call me names, and they're going to ruin my life. Well, I don't think so. Um, and many cults do this. If you leave, terrible things will happen to you. Bill Gothard does this. And we see elements of this in complementarianism, too. But if you are a nonconformist, you risk rejection and annihilation. And bas basically, we need to trust our inner witness. 
And, I, and my prayer for you and for the whole church is that God anoints the ears of his people to hear his voice. You know your shepherd's voice and the voice of another you will not follow. I pray that for everyone, that the voice of the Lord and the voice of truth you know, take what you want from this. The truth will speak through this. You can apply this to your own situations. You do not have to let any schoolyard bully or theological thug tell you that the word of God is ineffective because that's what they're doing. So stand strong in the Lord, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His life.